Hi guys, welcome to today's unboxing video. Today we're going to be looking at this Lego Harry Potter, Harry Potter and Hedwig Owl Delivery Set. My supervisor actually got me this because he just knows I'm crazy about Harry Potter. I think he also got the same set for his four year old son, so I don't know what that says about my mental age, but let's build it together, shall we? As you can see, it was really easy and simple to make. It took no time at all, and oh, doesn't it just look so cute? Like, look at the little goblets and the food, and Hedwig with the broom, and uh, oh. You've not visited our secret room for a long time. You should see what's in there now. Oh! I've got a headache! Full disclosure, I actually hadn't played Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix before, so this is going to be my raw, honest opinion. No rose tinted glasses for this one. It would have been nice if someone warned me that it was basically going to be House of the Dead crossed with Chess Simulator 2005, but if you ever want to watch me suck ass at playing your favourite old childhood game, then come and join me on YouTube Live or Twitch at some point. We had so much fun playing this game. Mercer is an LGBT ally. I can't argue with that. Enough introduction. It's time to gather Dumbledore's army in Harry Potter and the Order of the Phil O Enix. Yeah, that was that was meant to be funny. Harry Potter and the Order of the Phoenix was developed and published by EA Games in 2005 and is the fourth game in the mainline series, you know, <laughs> assuming you've completely obliterated every memory of Goblet of Fire out of your mind. The game was released on a wide variety of platforms, including the Wii, PS2, PS3, Xbox 360 and the PC, which I played and uh, boy was that a f***ing struggle to get working properly, I tell ya. <gasps> it's gonna crash, isn't it? Oh my god, don't crash. Don't crash, please. Yeah, like me moving the mouse, it's doing absolutely nothing. We're not controller 2, literally grow up. Finally in the game, we are dropped straight into Harry and Big D having a small bicker and wow, they have very clearly tried making them look like their film counterparts. And and to be honest, they've kind of succeeded. Luring Dudley into a tunnel filled with Dementors, Harry performs some magic tricks. Um, that's illegal, the police have been called. This is where we take some control over Harry. You have to wiggle the controls, just wiggle them, doesn't matter how, to scare away the Dementors. Promptly arriving at 12 Grimald Place, it's time we learn how to cast some spells, baby. And meeting some of the other characters, again they very clearly tried replicating exactly how the actors look, but they kind of look a bit wooden. Like, where is this invisible puppeteer controlling these bobble-headed characters? Ginny looks so ugly. Like, worse than when I dressed up as Ginny. This game arrived bang on target for the Wii generation and boy do they try to force motion controls down your throat no matter what console you're playing on. Spells are cast by moving the mouse, joystick or Wii remote in certain motions and they're mostly pretty intuitive like for Accio you pull the implement of choice towards you, Depulso away from you, Reparo in a circle, Wingardium Leviosa side to side and then pull the object up. I played with the mouse because apparently I was desperate to get RSI within 30 minutes of starting this game and actually I found it mostly okay to cast spells. Don't worry, this opinion may change later. Grimald Place acts as a tutorial for the most basic of spells. Great! Wow! I wonder how many more things there are to find. Washing up, no offence, is not something to find, but we are quickly whisked away into a cutscene skimming over the basic plot, such as the Order of the Phoenix, Harry's Court Summons, and introducing us to Dolores Umbridge, or as I just call her, Mummy. Mother. Mama. Honestly, Dumbledore's like, step on me. Ah, we finally arrive at Hogwarts, a place that Harry can finally relax, surrounded by all his friends. Try wizard twerp, had any more hallucinations? What the hell is going on? Wish I was as good okay, a as you. Okay, finally someone I'm not talking to you, Potter. My mum almost banned me from school because of you. You couldn't stop praising him like two seconds ago. Running away in tears, Harry takes refuge in this weird old castle. And oh my god, is Hogwarts gorgeous. They really did have budget for this somehow. The Grand Staircase is probably the best thus far into the series. Like, my god, this is stunning. The lighting is fantastic. The whole array of paintings makes the National Gallery envious. And the stairs actually act like they should. Mostly. Oh my god. God, any time today. Breaking into the Gryffindor common room, because obviously we don't know the password again, we are tasked with simply flipping over the notice board, which was uh, apparently too much for me to handle. Use your magic. I will bloody try my best. Also, Not what I was aiming at. Hello. Finally flipping the board, we unfortunately accidentally summon a demonic spectre. Oh! 
You see, interacting with items throughout Hogwarts releases these glowing blue orbs, no beans to be found in this game, sorry, and the more you collect, the more Myrtle reveals of her secret hidden chamber containing magical delights, like behind the scenes videos with the cast. Unfortunately, she keeps returning to jump scare the player throughout the whole game. Got so much to do in this game. <gasps> Honestly, the weird one-sided sexual tension was turned up to a 10 in this game. Special thing. Why is she talking like this? Completely ignoring that side conquest that nobody asked for, Hermione starts to order Harry around as usual. Um, HP2, PS2, war flashbacks? You better go to your detention. We need to find Neville. We need a severing charm. You've got to tell Dumbledore about this. That's an opinion. Using the Marauder's Map, we set our quest marker for the first Defense Against the Dark Arts lesson of the year, and follow the conveniently inky footprints. And honestly, thank god they exist. I could not for the life of me find my way around Hogwarts, this version of Hogwarts is the most complex and ambitious in any of the games up to this point, and appears to be very much based on the Hogwarts as found in the film series, with some of the same statues, portraits and architecture. I absolutely love this Hogwarts, and it's clear that the developers put a lot of love and attention into its creation. The grounds and exterior of the castle are also pretty damn good, with some wide angle shots showing off the landscape. Although I didn't encounter too many hidden passages, there were a fair amount of interactable objects and puzzles and even a couple of really fun easter eggs. That's stunning, what an easter egg. With a big Hogwarts comes big distances, and thankfully the game has a whole bunch of talking portraits that can take you all around the castle, but only after you've found both ends, woken them up, and fulfilled whatever impossible demands they have. Remember to like, comment, and subscribe, but honestly, 100% would recommend doing, even if you have to listen to this old fart say the same damn thing every time. A healthy mind is an inquisitive mind. Literally get a new line. Anyway, heading to class, running all the way up the Defense Against the Dark Arts Tower, butch femme icon Dolores refuses to teach because, let's be honest, she's really hot and just uses her looks to get through life. Using spells? Hermione, addicted to learning because she's a right know-it-all and, and a teacher's, teacher's pet. pet. No, I am not. Gets Fred and George to teach them some basic self-defense, including stupefy to stun and expelliarmus to disarm. Harry then hangs out with certified MILF Umbridge after class for a bit of physical contact. Hermione insists on healing the wound herself rather than take Harry to a medically trained professional like Madame Pomfrey and obviously has to consult a library book, which just so happens to be sitting directly on top of the bookshelf out of reach to fill in for time and pad the game out a bit, Harry has to move a table a bunch of times to reach the book, only for it to not even be the right book, but then they decide to just go ahead and read it anyway because... Thankfully they take it to a super secret sexy place, the bathroom of Harry's new love interest, Moaning Myrtle. Don't put the lights on, I've got a headache! Conveniently, the book contains all the spells they need for the rest of the game. Guess there's not going to be any fun spell lessons this year then. They practice Incendio by burning the bathroom to the ground, and Harry is already apparently forming Dumbledore's army. Jeez, we are burning through the plot here. We apparently need to find Neville for some undisclosed reason. We need to find Neville. We. And finding him, we help him set fire to the Herbology greenhouses. Damn, there's a lot of arson happening for a kid's game. In return, he leads us to the Room of Requirement, the perfect place place for underage wizards to perform illegal spellcasting and disgusting teenage romances. Quickly learning Protego, a shielding spell, the main chunk of the game finally begins, gathering Dumbledore's army. That's right baby, strap in and get ready to complete a whole array of tasks for a bum load of lazy assholes who can't be bothered to even lift a finger to help. The tasks they give you range in excuse and effort, from things like collecting potions ingredients, battling slimy snivelling Slytherin students, and talking to every single one of these weird pig statues, I don't know. Are you happy with your position in life? Hermione, not now, we don't need this. Obviously, I'm not going to talk about each of them, but here are some of my highlights and uh, low lights. Looney Lovegood asks you to help feed the Thestrals. You know, those creatures that are invisible, don't exist, and she clearly just made up. By levitating this giant sack of rotting meat from the bottom of this hill to the top. If you like Wingardium Leviosa, boy, you're going to love this challenge. No! Help. Help. It's too late. I thought you were supposed to be good at magic. Alright, bitch. Hiding the fireworks for Fred, George and Lee Jordan, while being a bit boring in itself, has a really joyous ending. Cho's task is, um, <laughs> King Gross. Oh, hi Harry. 
how are you? Have these two people met each other before? Breaking into the owlery, Harry finds that Cho has stupidly forgotten to write the address on a present before giving it to an owl. Like, babe, that's literally the definition of a you problem. Obviously, every time you approach the owl, it buggers off again, and you have to deal with some painfully slow shimmying along the walls. Oh no. This is so slow. Ah! While listening to some revoltingly romantic music. Finally capturing the dumb creature, we then have to suffer through Harry and Cho awkwardly chatting. I was wondering if... Uh... If we could... Bleh. Say it! Going back to the shimmying, there's not like absolutely loads of it in the game, thank god, but some sections do require a metric f <laughs> ton of shimmying. Gameplay. Generally, I found Harry moves okay. Get out the way. Obviously, there's no jumping anymore because Harry's bones are old and brittle now. Ugh, can relate. The camera angles can also decide to just be completely random sometimes, with characters blocking each other off or facing off into nothing during dialogue. You don't stand a chance. Face me. A secret room? You don't have I've got something in our secret room to show you. I've already spoken a bit about the graphics and characters, which can sometimes look eerily similar to their film counterparts, Snape and McGonagall being especially good examples. They do kind of move like puppets though, especially the way their mouths move, like this is giving me Toy Story 1 energy. The voice acting is, as usual, pretty solid. So how do we get it? No password, no entry. I am about to attempt to break into your mind. I don't know what's been going on here, but I'm keeping my eye on all of you lot. There's nothing in here about actually using defensive spells. <laughs> using spells? The music is also pretty damn great, this time being mostly composed by James Hannigan, with some music added from the previous games and even from the film score. That's gonna be fun for monetizing this video. The music here does feel more similar to the actual music from the film, which definitely adds to the grander scope of this game compared to all the previous games. Having gathered all the DA members, there is an opportunity to try out some of the extra stuff this game has to offer before continuing on with the story. While this game doesn't have the same lesson structure as previous games, you can actually go go to each of the main teachers and complete a challenge for them. To be honest, I mostly couldn't be bothered to do this, like, oh, what's the reward I'm gonna get? More stupid points to give to Myrtle? Ugh, no thanks. There are also a bunch of games to play around the castle, including card games, which I aced, gobstones, which I absolutely sucked ass at, and of course, wizard chess, which I was, uh, I was alright at, yeah. <sighs> During one match in the Great Hall, I could just hear a kidnapped Angelina Johnson screaming and crying out for help in the background. Could that person in the background keep it down? Snogging Cho Chan, Harry then has a nightmare. <laughs> Not surprised to be honest, I had one after having to watch that. <laughs> and Dumbledore sends Harry off to have some therapy with Snape, because he's obviously going to be the easiest for Harry to open up to. The occlumency classes with Snape are uh, kind of dumb. You just have to press the opposite direction he's pointing at again and again. The scenes are really trippy though and out of place with the rest of the game, but I, I kind of like it. Defeating Snape, we are teleported back to Grimald Place at Christmas. Jesus, we did so much and it's only Christmas. Also, love that they clearly just wanted to reuse this location, seeing as it was barely used earlier on. It's almost time for you to return to Hogwarts. We just got here. Ron's hanging around in uh, only his underwear for some reason. Feel free to check out my Patreon. And then after a brief chat, we go back to Hogwarts again and are introduced to Grawp. Oh wow, is he going to be in a playable part of the game? Spoiler alert. He is not. After another unnecessary drug-induced trip, we teach everyone Expecto Patronum. Not that it ever gets used again as far as I'm aware. Before Dolores Umbridge obliterates the entrance to the Room of Requirement, the absolute legend she is. It's Umbridge! How did you find us? Because she's a absolute up. MILF, Come. that's how. Hurry. Used her MILF powers. After a short battle with the DA, that is Dolores' army. Dolor Dolores's? Dolores? Dolores' army? Cho reveals herself to be a snitch. Probably went off Harry after his awful kissing skills, let's be honest. Dumbledore is like, that's enough drama for one lifetime, hun, I'm out. And Umbridge decides to make herself headmaster. Look at her, queen, queen of Hogwarts. Oh my god, she's really small. Having heard that Hagrid's run away, the trio head to his hut to find it smoking and smouldering, surrounded by a group of Slytherins. It was at this point I realised that, uh, I was not good at casting spells in stressful situations. Shield up, wrong button. Get up, get up. Oh my god, come on, Expelliarmus, Expelliarmus, not him. The DA decides to get their own back and cause chaos around the school. This part was the next main bit of the game, this time requiring some more complex tasks. And honestly, I found a lot of this part of the game really hilarious. That's funny.
funny. I like how instead of laughing, I say that's funny. Clambering over collapsing parts of the castle, we find magic boxes hidden by the Weasley twins that flood the area with a whole new ecosystem. And I'm not gonna lie, I kind of love how these swamps look, with lots of lush vegetation and flowers. I think I'll stay here and see if any hinky punks come. They've already come and taken your brain away, love. Dismantling and reorganizing the cogs for the clock tower, the clock hands in pendulum go absolutely berserk, and the way it moves is actually so funny to me. Like, it's just, it just stays like this for the rest of the game. That's so fast. Someone's going to die. Ah! The DA also decide to fuck <laughs> with the speaker's umbridge installed throughout the school, broadcasting propaganda. Honestly, the hardest part of this task was stacking up benches to reach the speakers. Ah. Didn't want to get hit, get out of the way. But it was 100% worth it hearing the sabotage speech afterwards. Ah! Eat frog! Unfortunately, some more clambering is required to reach some of the swamp boxes and fireworks. Like, no offense, but I'd rather games were just shorter than padding them out with this kind of garbage. But imagine if he just fell. That's it. Dead. Oh wait, sorry, he has skelly grow. After our final after-school class with Snip, Harry commands Fred and George to burn this place to the ground, and we briefly get to play as one of the twins as they fly around the grand staircase setting off fireworks they've set up around the school. Thinking they've chased off Umbridge for good, Don't bother keeping in touch, you old bat! The trio break into her office to try and talk to Sirius by flu powder after Harry's imagination runs away again as usual. Thankfully, Dolores returns to punish the little rule breakers. Oh, slap me like that, mummy. The game decides to fire forward through the rest of the game, where Umbridge gets taken away, select members of the DA fly off to London, Harry puts his grubby fingers on priceless artifacts, the one with the power to vanquish the Dark Lord approaches, literally no one asked, and then playing as Sirius, we try to murder both Lucius and Bellatrix, thankfully Bellatrix is able to protect herself, and accidentally kills Sirius, oh I'm really sorry mister. Next thing we know, we are thrust into Dumbledore's body, and the big battle between him and Voldemort commences. It was, uh, okay. I wasn't really sure what I was supposed to be doing for most of it. I was kind of just casting spells at random, but eventually managed to progress. Voldemort then sits on the fountain and charges up big balls of energy that we can reflect back with Protego, followed by chairs upon chairs being flung at Dumbledore. This bit was pretty visually impressive, if a bit simplistic gameplay-wise. Not content with his lessons with Snape, Harry forces Voldemort to teach some more occlumency. This is uncomfortably close, I won't lie to you. It's not very covid compliant. And before we know it, he's gone once again. Returning back to Hogwarts, we face the most powerful enemy of the game so far, Merciful. This is the final boss battle. Oh, all that's left to do now is play some more games, find Luna's stolen possessions. How come people hide your stuff? Uh, because she's a f***ing <laughs> loser. And complete any other unexplored secrets. And that basically concludes the game. Overall, I... I like this game, even though it did have its problems with repetitive tasks, weirdly paced storytelling, and less than ideal controls at times, I found that generally I had a great time playing Order of the Phoenix. The Hogwarts in this game was sprawling, twisty, and ornate, and even though it was confusing at times, the mini portraits and Marauder's map definitely helped a lot. I actually kinda liked that you didn't just follow the story continuously, but actually spent a long time in-game on a relatively short part story-wise. Gathering Dumbledore's army, did involve completing a lot of tasks of varying quality. Come to the room of requirement on the seventh floor. Yeah, okay, I'll be there. Is it okay if I bring my camera? No, it's not. Please, shut up. But they were just about varied enough to not drag too much. I thought I would end up hating the spell casting system, and though I definitely struggled during battles, I found it to be a refreshing way of actually choosing the spell to cast. Honestly, this game felt the closest to an open world style Hogwarts so far in the series. One of my friends has described it as quite mundane but in a nice way and this basically summarizes my thoughts too a solid game with fantastic open world hogwarts relaxed gameplay freaky character models cinematic music and a whole lot of charm if i ever see moaning myrtle again it'll be too soon what a game what a game Pretty as well, yeah. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do. There'll be plenty more Harry Potter in the future. Apparently they only get worse from here, so um something to look forward to. Come and catch me live at some point. And also come and join the Discord channel if you want. It's pretty crazy. Thank you all for sticking around to the end of this crazy video, and I'll catch you next time. Bye! Also, another point. Do you remember when <laughs> you were going Oh wait, to she slaps him. The Cruciatus curse ought to loosen your tongue. Honestly, what an absolute icon. Shut up, bitch. Let us speak. Using spells?